on this edition of The Self-Publishing Show. Advertising is a force multiplier. You're building success forward. You're putting more products out there. What's happening is over time, you will have people self-select. You will have readers come and say, all this lines up with what I want. Publishing is changing. No more gatekeepers, no more barriers, no one standing between you and your readers. Do you want to make a living from your writing? Join indie bestseller Mark Dawson and first-time author James Blatch as they shine a light on the secrets of self-publishing success. This is The Self-Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello and welcome to The Self-Publishing Show with me, James Blatch. And me, Mark Dawson. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm looking a bit windswept and uh, golfy today. All oh, my layers, look how many layers I've got on. It was freezing this morning, but beautiful. Um, yeah, yeah, it was lovely here too, yeah. Yeah, it's rare time. So I nipped out and got some fresh air. Stupid golf for my stupid mental health, which is a bit of a TikTok trend. Here, here's me and my stupid walk for my stupid mental health. Right. Um, oh, yes, yes I'm, that, yeah. I'm, I'm getting quite into TikTok and uh, quite enjoying it and um, finding it quite easy because they're so short, really, the little bits. Once you come, latch onto something, it's quite easy just to turn them out quite quickly. And if you um, you can batch them as well, of course. Batch them. Um, batch them. Blatch them. Blatch them. them. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the reason we're talking about TikTok is not just idly because uh, it is definitely a platform that some authors are finding great success on. Unusually, organically. So, you know, we always talk about pay to play. Uh, but there was a day with Facebook when you didn't have to pay to play. It was organic reach would get you all over the place and would start selling you books because you'd be reaching readers easily. Then, of course, the platform was monetized and gradually the algorithm worked so that if you paid, you got access to people you didn't know so much so well. But if you didn't pay, you basically not even you didn't even get to see all your friends. It started to really narrow it down to the people who interact with you organically so it's a friends thing or you pay to reach bigger audiences well tiktok's in its early days it's in its infancy still i know there's i know it's the largest website on the planet now but it is still in those early what we'd call list building stage i suppose where you know they want the platform to be successful so dive in now um is my advice if you uh if you're so inclined uh, and we have a, a course a module coming on adding into ads for authors called tiktok for authors of course it's brilliant uh, uh, going through the editing process at the moment it's stylish this is a stylish course mark it looks like a look you can see the way the money's gone in the presentation of this course like you know big hollywood film with special effects it looks great lots of green screen and looking into phones and stuff uh, because, of course, TikTok's quite a visual medium, so we do need to do that a bit. But uh, Lila Dubois and Jane uh, Rylan are the two women who are putting the course together, or have put it together. We're now actually putting it physically together, and it will be out probably the end of February, beginning of March. Um, and part of Ads for Authors, and um, Ads for Authors is uh, is open, is it not, Mark? It's open now. Yeah, just uh, I'll just stop the stopwatch. Yeah, that was that was a minute of James's monologue before I get the chance to say anything. Um, yes, it I've is got open. two more things to say. No, go on. Oh, good. Um, yes, it's open as we recorded this open last night. So uh, when does this go out, James? Friday? No, Friday, Friday it does. So. Next Friday, a week Friday. Next, so it's been open yeah, a week so and a bit. It will be the twenty first because that's yeah, we'll be out for a week and a bit. Um, and. Yeah, it's gone, very, as we record this, very well. Lots of people have joined, which is always nice to see. Um, and, uh, yeah, we've, as you say, we've we've got the TikTok module at Facebook, Amazon, and lots more, BookBub. Um, and lovely to see lots of uh, fresh faces in the, uh, the the exclusive Mastery Facebook group, which is the one that goes along with the course. It's always, always great. And, and starting to see people kind of dip their toes into uh, the content and starting to uh, experiment with the various ad platforms which is uh, is exciting because it's always the case that someone at the moment who isn't selling very many copies of their books um, in six months' time will probably be on the podcast telling us that they've just retired their husband or wife or just bought a yacht somewhere, uh, I think of Mark Recklow, um, or just is just generally has turned their, their sales around. It was one of the you know, things we love to see the most. So I wonder who it will be. Could it be, could it be Jay Blatch? Am I going to be the one? He could be the one. Go get that second book out. Yes. yes go, well, almost. Rather, rather than going off and playing golf, you, what you should have been doing is what I did all day, and that's been um, 
writing. So I've been, <laughs> been pushing out the, the next book. You're assuming I didn't get up early and write this morning? Well, it's possible. I'm, I'm, I'm doubting you, did, given that we all went to bed quite late last night. Um, oh. Not together, obviously. That would be kind of you a would be right if I didn't this morning. I did get up reasonably early, but I didn't write this morning. But um, I'm, I'm in the last... I'm literally on the last chapter. I, actually, that's not tr- quite true because I did skip ahead in the middle. But having skipped ahead... I'm pretty certain when I go back, what I need to do is basically just cap off where I'd got to because it was time for the book to move on anyway. So that won't be a big about the writing in the middle of the book. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm really enjoying the last part of it. And I've sneakily, it's a military thriller set in the 1960s with lots of flying in it. Sneakily, it's quite romantic, this book as well. And the last chapters, mm, I think, I'm quite enjoying the romance side of it. God, that's well, sounds good. Looking forward to reading it. Yeah. Now, what you'll um, do now, of course, unless you hopefully you've learned your lesson, is you'll you'll now junk the whole thing and start again, at yes. least at least three times. So we'll uh, not this time. Not some this point time. in twenty, I think twenty twenty eight, the the new version of five will be finished and you'll be ready to go. Not this time. No, I'm uh, I'm ahead of the game, and my development editor has already read a big chunk of it. He's read about forty five thousand words of it, and he's happy, and we've had a Good. chat about it. So he thinks it's going to be ready for. Well, um, we will well, hold I'll, you. We'll hold you to that. And if it's yeah, really by March ma- the first, to him. March the first. Well, that, that'll certainly. Well, be March the first for the editor. May the first for the public. That'll certainly. Well, May the fourth is the day you should release it, of course, for obvious yes. reasons. May the fourth be with you. Um, but yeah, so that that's going to be before the conference. Um, so there's a deadline because if you haven't released it by then, this is this is the chance for everyone who's going to the conference to give you a hard time at the conference. So. Am I always going to be given a hard time? Well, I think I think you need tough love. I've had ten you know, years so, of that. Some some people need coddling. Other people need um, carrot and stick. I think you're more of a stick kind of person. Um. Anyway, I've got to think of a title because I don't think I'm going to go with redneck. Although I do like it because it works at every like, level. That I, I like. quite like redneck. Where is it potentially not very exciting? Yeah, and and what um. My dev editor, what Andrew said to me, he said, really, you know, you've got the final flight and mm. the flight says a lot. And final flight, so you're, that's a good title, should be working. This title should be working in the same way. Yeah. So he's, yeah. he likes the idea of having the word flight in there because it, it's about a precision release of a missile. We could we could call it precision flight, which I quite like. Ooh, no, that's boring. You don't like precision no, flight? No, precision is not exactly an exciting word, is it? Precision is somewhere with a set square sitting down, going being very precise. That's not exciting. Well, that... I, no. you could fly is not a bad idea. Um, we have to think about this. Um, I think we could do a lot better. I quite like the final well, flight or the last flight as it, used, as it was called. That is quite good because it tells you yeah. what. why is it the final flight? That suggests a crash, yeah. which is quite exciting. Precision flight. That's going, oh, I shall, I shall uh, I'll leave the airport at 6.23 <laughs> and 15 seconds. It's about shall... releasing a missile at Mach 6 yeah, in the well, upper atmosphere. The fact that you have to tell me that is not obvious from, your, from the title, is it? So let's, I, I think we can well, definitely be better than that. Well, you got lots okay. of time to think about it. All right. Well, I could do a little, um, I could, I could pull our wonderful you Facebook could. community, couldn't Absolutely. I? I'll put a yeah. little synopsis in and see what people come up with. Yeah. I did that before, actually. I, I needed a, a tagline for the print copy of the second Milton book, and I wasn't sure. I didn't have any really good ideas. So I actually, um, I, I must have had 200 comments with suggestions and some mm. absolutely great ones. Re- and I actually picked oh. one. One of the, the one on, on the hardback is the one that was suggested by, I don't know who it was now, but someone in the community suggested that. It was, and it was really okay. good. Was it something like to kill... A, to kill a saint, you need the a precision sinner, or so, kill. Something like that. Yeah. Um, no, basically, crowd, crowdsourcing that is a very good idea. I think that will help okay. a lot. I shall do it. I shall do it after this episode. Um, so look for that in the Facebook community group. Um, so just circling back to the course, selfpublishingformula.com forward slash ads for authors is where to go to read all about what's in the course, not just, of course, TikTok for authors. That's simply the latest module. Um, but there are courses on Facebook ads for advertising, Facebook ads for authors, uh, Amazon ads for authors, and so on, BookBub ads. Uh, and on the co- subject of Amazon ads, we're going to have a webinar with Janet Margot uh, next Wednesday. Janet, of course, has come from the coalface in Amazon ads. She's part of the, uh, she was part of the team there. She now works in a different part of the uh, Amazon empire. Um, but she's joined Team SPF to teach her, her life's ambition to get us all using Amazon ads effectively to sell our books. 
Um, and so we have a webinar with her, which is coming up, and that will be on Wednesday. The no, no, wait, it will be on Thursday, the twenty seventh of January. So that is next Thursday, the twenty seventh of January. It'll be at nine p.m. UK, which I guess is what five p.m. Eastern time. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have to use my fingers. Four, five, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, four p.m. I think Eastern. Um, and uh, if you want to sign up for that, if you go to selfpublishingformula.com forward slash learn Amazon, I've made that up, but I'll tell John after this call, learn Amazon, L-E-A-R-N-A-M-A-Z-O-N or Z-O-N if you like, uh, selfpublishingformula.com forward slash learn Amazon. And that will be a webinar with Janet Margot where you will get takeaway tips on how to effectively run Amazon ads. And you and I, Mark, are going to do an episode. I keep saying we're going to do this, but we are going to do an episode. And we're just going to talk about the ads platforms. Um, there's, you know, you and I have a lot, we're both running ads. We're both successfully running ads. And we both talk about this off air sometimes about how to know what your what ads are being successful and so on. A lot of the sort of detail. And they, they are conversations we need to record, I think, and have an episode about, um, particularly Amazon ads, which is not a straightforward platform to measure. Um, and people asking me with one book, how, how do you make a profit with Facebook ads? Well, I can show you and I can talk through that. And I, I will do a post to go along with this in the Facebook group because I've started to uh, set that stuff, stuff aside. But um, I am genuinely doing it. I'll show you the screen perhaps. Um, but uh, it's a tiny profit. It's basically a break even profit. It's like 150 quid, I think, up on the year. Well, but as, as we said before, you're effectively being paid to build your audience. Exactly. It's, it's, yeah. not, it's, it's a neutral exercise to build an audience which is a, is a valuable thing so yeah absolutely yeah. and it's uh and it's spending 500 pounds in ads and they're getting 550 pounds in in revenue back and so it's not it's not a small churn it's about 250 to 350 books a month being yeah, sold it's very, very good. once you yeah. divide the knp by mm -hmm. by the page numbers so yes i'm doing exactly what i set out to do which is simply to build audience build interest and um i'm getting some brilliant comments actually i'm really pleased with the comments i get the reviews i get have been great and the comments on the facebook ads themselves there are i can you know people tell me they're waiting for my next book so that's the mm. object of this exercise isn't yeah. it so if you're in my position if you've yet, yet to release your first book or you've released one book you're working on books two and three um that might be useful to you to know how i've approached it sitting at the knee of the master of facebook ads um and i have learned from mark and i've applied them and i'm being effective with them and not just with my books but with few's books as well so we will have an episode maybe next week maybe we'll do it next week and uh, we'll record that um okay so we are actually going to talk about book marketing today uh with our special guest who is nick thacker and nick is a thriller writer he's topped charts before but nick works one-on-one -on -one with people now and he broaches that i think for the authors who who um there are lots of them simply don't know where to get started with marketing um they they're good at writing they love writing they love being an author they stare down the barrel of facebook ads and amazon ads and bookbub and mailing lists and all these things and they don't know where to start uh, uh, of course there is a fantastic course you can do uh, from mark dawson but m we talk about that we do talk about the courses that you do need to take of course marks is one of them but we also talk about that mindset shift which is a really really important part of being successful so that is where nick's coming from uh, as i say he works with authors across the spectrum let's hear from nick now this is the self-publishing show there's never been a better time to be a writer nick thacker welcome to the self-publishing show is that a hockey shirt for people watching on youtube it, it's a hockey shirt this is my colorado avalanche shirt uh, uh sweater i guess is the technical term Sweater. It's actually not one they wear on the ice, but it's a uh, from the no, shop. No, this one's a fake one. Uh, but oh, the, okay. the ones on the ice, yeah, they're real sweaters. They have little, you need to tie them and everything. It's cute. So randomly, I have actually been to the Avalanche. I went skiing at Winter Park. And we went for a day trip into Denver. And we went to the stadium. I didn't see a game, unfortunately, but um, I did buy. Oh, no, okay. I did buy like a Letterman jacket uh, with Avalanche on it, which I wore for years. Well, they're doing really well now, so they're fun to watch. Uh, but I've I've been a fan of them since we moved here in 2012. 
There you go. Good one. Well, guys, I haven't been to an NHL game for many years, so I have to go at some point uh, when we can start traveling properly. Right, Nick, we are not talking about ice hockey or sport. We are going to be talking about book marketing with you. But as always, I do love to dive in a little bit to you and your writing and your background. So why don't we start with that? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, how much time do we have? No, um, no one really cares about the background uh, as much because that's not as fun. But so so the, the, the 30 second version is I never wanted to be a writer. Um, I don't even know if I want to be a writer now, actually, but I, uh, I fell into writing books because my grandfather passed away and I wanted to write a book for my dad, um, his son. And I thought, how hard could it be? You know, this is, I, I read all these books and, and some of them are great. Some of them are good. Some of them are not so good. How hard can this really be? Uh, I was very naive, but like most things in life, I think if I knew how hard it was, I never would have done it in the first place. Uh, but that launched everything, um, everything from, from 2011 on, which obviously is a lot of books, a lot of fiction. I write thrillers, uh, but it's also this marketing side of things because at the time, I was working for a marketing company. That was my whole background. Um, I have a music degree, but then I switched to business toward the end and really loved talking about marketing and doing the marketing tasks and, and, and thinking strategy and tactics and all that. And so it was very natural for me to market books, right? Because that was sort of, I came at it from a marketing perspective. I thought, well, I can't write to save my life, but I can certainly market the hell out of this book and we'll you know see if we can get it to sell. Um, and I think I've improved a little bit as a writer over the years, but um, one of the things that's always remained true is that I'm not afraid of the marketing um, like I know some other authors are, especially the newer authors who don't necessarily want to put that hat on. Um, and so that's what I've been talking about lately is, is how to market books and what it means to market a book and generally just how to approach it from a marketing perspective. Okay. So you, you just, just on your books for a second, so you chose, you chose thrillers because that was your genre that your father read or your, your grandfather said inspired by him. Yes. Uh, and sorry, I should, yeah, I can dive in a little more. Just the, the three of us used to trade paperback novels okay. um, and they were all in the thriller genre. You know, these are Dan Brown, Clive Cussler, Michael Ludlum, um, you know, and, and Michael Crichton. And so these were, these were the authors that I read. And so um, I, I thought, well, I'm going to write a book when naturally it was going to have to be something that I'd, I knew a little about, and that was thriller. So that's how I got into that. Now I still only really write thrillers. I've done some sci-fi and, and all that, but thriller is really my my bread and butter. Yeah. Um, but it's it's action adventure, all the way to techno thriller. There's some history, but it's all firmly in that thriller category. Yeah. Well, that sounded like the list of um of my the books that I read, not just because I've read them over the years, but specifically when I was trying to work out how to write my own thriller, having done a first draft, and then. Um, started reading Ludlum and, and, and Crichton and uh, Ludlum in particular. Yeah, because your, it, your book is right in that same category too. Yeah. You've done it better than the rest of us, I will say, but um, you, you've done so. it slower than the rest I'm of us I'm just slower. Too. Yeah, that's for so. sure. I did feel <laughs> out of that list you, you gave, I found reading the Robert Ludlum books was the most illustrating for what a genre, a thriller genre fiction book is because it's not necessarily... I think you know. I prefer, probably prefer reading Michael Crichton and Stephen King, and but but Ludlam is is he he has that ability to write a book that is just a one that gets turned the page turned on the tube on the subway, Absolutely. and then they buy the next one in the series. And I'm not going to be Stephen King, I'm not going to be Michael Crichton, but actually potentially could write Robert Ludlam style books. I think that's an ex it's accessible to to more of us as writers. That's why I felt anyway. I, I would agree with that. I think it's um, it's simple, but not simplistic yeah. uh, in his writing. And I think a lot of good, I think Dan Brown is the same way. Yes. Uh, it's approachable from a writing style. Um, I think the negative side of that, people would argue that it's that there is no style. It's just words. Uh, but I'm fine with that because in thrillers, it really is plot driven and, and you, you're character driven with a with a strong plot. And I, I know from reading yours, um, absolutely, I would agree with that. I think you could, I think you could be the next level. <laughs> He's already dead too, so you've yes, already, he is. Yes, knocked, I you've think, already knocked him off, and 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 you can really just usurp his his throne. That's very kind of you, Nick. I'll, I'll hold you to that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think isn't Robert Ludlum is one of these authors who's still writing books despite the fact he's no he, longer he's with still, us. He's very dead, but he's also very uh, prolific somehow. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Clive Custler's in that as well. Yes, Clive Custler yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay, there we go. Um, look, let's talk about marketing then. So, and I think specifically, you know, I do get asked this a lot. In fact, I had a conversation earlier this afternoon, a techie conversation about a guy's going to do tech work with us, and as it transpired and are getting to know each other 30 seconds at the beginning he said his mum has written a series of military sci-fi books going back about 15 years i looked her up and her rankings are in the telephone numbers but the, re re the reviews are really good 
And sure. he said she does it as a hobby. She's terrified of marketing, has never started it, doesn't know who we are, SBF, and just writes, has now given up, long given up of ever selling the books. That's not an unusual position for a lot of writers to be in. They just don't not know where to start, right? That's very true. Um, I That's pretty much the exact, almost verbatim what I hear from, from even authors that are very prolific, very good, better than me. Um, they don't know where to start. They don't know why people seem to like the book. The reviews reflect this love of their writing, um, but the sales certainly don't reflect anything, right? They're, yeah. they're just dead. Um, and, and that's a, it, you know, a, a difficult thing to unpack sometimes because it involves looking at your art from this objective point that marketers aren't afraid to do. A lot of times a marketer, you know, will come in and, and market a separate product. They didn't create that product, so they, it's not their baby. But with books, you know, no one else is marketing our books for us. We have to look at them from this objective standpoint. Um, and and I, I always urge authors before they really start trying to market and put that in quotes to do the activities that we call marketing, like pay for ads or get on social media or do whatever it is um, to look at their own book and try to be as objective as possible, because there are very often very simple things that we can change to improve them, um, not to improve them from a you're not a good writer standpoint. And here's how to make be a better writer but from a product standpoint, from somebody who wants to go click a button that says, buy this book and start reading it. Um, there's a lot of psychology there that, that has to be, you know, kind of, kind of like dominoes, you know, knock them over in the right way. And this is what I'm getting at. And to be very, to be more specific, instead of being vague is, is things like the book cover. Yeah. Um, now I, I personally don't believe that a book cover sells books. I think the only thing a book cover can do is lose a sale. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, we as readers, as anyone who's browsing Amazon or whatever the, the bookstore is, um, we don't really care what the book cover is. I mean, in, in the thriller genre, I, I can say confidently, and I think this is true for other genres as well, I don't care what the book cover is. I only care that it's good enough. I only care that it reflects my expectation of what I want to get out of that book. Um, and so that means it has to be professional. It has to look like the other books in that genre. It doesn't necessarily need to be generic, but it doesn't need to, I don't want it to stand out with, you know, crappy typeface and uh, weird colors and, and things that, that aren't true to that genre. And the reason um, I'm, I'm sounding vague about it is that that's different for every genre. Yeah. What we almost have to do as an author is um, the first, this is the first thing I would recommend to any author in that position is, is go find other authors, not your friends necessarily, unless your friends are USA Today bestselling authors that have sold books and know what I'm talking about, but go find real authors. You know, you and me, for example, uh, would be good at this to, to, to look at their book and, and give them objective feedback. That That's what that author needs to do is say, hey, well, what's wrong with this book? Is, it, is, is there anything wrong? There may not be. There may not be anything wrong with it. It may be fine. The cover may be working great. The description may be fine, but there's a chance that they're missing some objective feedback that they they just can't see themselves because it's their baby. Yeah. So with this, we're talking really about the package. The book package is is a sort of it's, expression that yeah, covers yep. the cover, the title, even I think, and the blurb. And and how often do you find when when people come to you with no marketing background, don't know where to get started, that they do have fundamental problems with the book package? Is that a common thing? It, it is, and I would say that that's why I'm saying that there's a chance it could be perfectly fine. But the, the majority of the authors that I, I see that are in this position, they've written one book, maybe two books. Um, there's usually always something wrong. And I don't say that as like a, they, they're, they're terrible, of course, um, or, or they're, they're just not good writers, but there's something not letting that psychological trigger be flipped right, with, with the buyer. Um, and it's often very simple. It's often, hey, well, you, you're using this font this typeface, I should say, that just doesn't work for whatever reason. It's serif and everything in your genre is sans serif. These are things that you wouldn't necessarily know to look for unless you've looked at thousands of book covers and you've approached it from the standpoint of a marketer. Mm. Um, the good news is you don't have to have looked at a thousand book covers. You just go find people who have. Yeah. That's so why that, I said you and I, yeah. Um, yeah. Dawson, you know, anyone who's who's been in this, in this world for a little while um, can pretty quickly identify those things. So the good news is you don't have to pay a professional marketer to go do this for you, but have some, some, like I say, a group of people, maybe three or four or five people who are authors who, who have been doing it for a while, go look at your package and, and say, Hey, the book package, I should clarify yeah. and say, Hey, this is, um, you know, uh, sorry, <laughs> this is, this is what's wrong with your book. Um, let's try to fix these and, and, and then try doing all those other marketing activities. And that, 
looking at other people who are in the same area and um that's helpful i think what is also helpful is some understanding of the role of the cover for instance uh you know people who don't ever think about this or ever have a conversation about it, they've just written a book and they live slightly isolated world from the sort of groups and, and communities that we inhabit i wonder what conversation they have with a cover designer particularly if it's not a dedicated book cover design just somebody who's you know, they, they say, well, this is the story, this is the rest of it. But are they thinking, what is the role of this cover? Whereas I think a lot about that now, much, much more. Now, the only reason I think about it is because other people have had this conversation with me over and over again. And they've said, your cover is not to look good on an art gallery or look good on your wall, or it's not to tell the story that's in your book or to show exactly how big or small the character was. Your book cover is to tell people what genre your book is. Precisely. And just to be to be real quick with this, because I know I know you've got other other things we want to cover, too. Um, again, speaking from the thriller genre um, only, because that's really my, my only area of expertise as far as, as marketing goes. Um, there are things like your cover uh, should reflect the tone of the book that you're going to. Is it dark? Is it gritty? Is it edgy? Is it humorous? Is it light? Um, because these are expectations that need to be met. It, otherwise that psychological trigger won't be flipped by the buyer. Right. Um, and so, so it needs to express the tone, but you're exactly right. It shouldn't express the whole story. You know, if there's a lighthouse in the closing scene in an airplane flight, it doesn't necessarily mean we have to see a lighthouse in an airplane. Um, we just need to get the tone right. Um, maybe a little bit about pacing. Somebody's running rather than standing still. Mm -hmm. Okay. That says probably more action than, you know, walking through life and letting things happen to them. That's important in thrillers. All we're doing though, and, and, and by talking about all this so many times and, and just kind of doubling down on all these points, I think a lot of people hear me say the book cover is so important. It's how your book will be sold. And, and again, I'm going back to, I don't think that's the case. I think the only thing your book cover is going to do is lose a sale. All you're doing by getting these tone, tonal things right. Sorry, my dogs are losing their mind. Um, yeah, as okay. usual. They, they, they saw the calendar. They know I'm on a call. Yeah. Um, all you're doing is, is making sure that you're checking these boxes for the potential buyer. You know, if they're coming to your page, knowing they want a thriller, now they may not be able to, to, to clarify that they want it to be, you know, gritty and edgy with a touch of humor, but they're going to know when they see it. And if they don't see it, they're not going to buy it because that's not what they, they don't want to read something that's light and, and, you know, um, cozy necessarily right so so you're just make, making sure you 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 get people through that sales process and the first place that happens is with the cover most of the time yeah even with ads you, you see the book cover you may not even have a description in that ad but you see the book cover so yeah. it, is, it is important yeah and that um thing you really don't want is a is a mismatch or to confound a reader expectation for them to look at a cover and a title and think one thing then read a book and get something else because that's a recipe for bad reviews and low sales exactly yep yeah. yep and if, if they buy it you know yeah, a lot of times they'll open the, the yeah. look inside on amazon for example and read through oh you know this is a little bit more tongue-in-cheek humor um i really wanted something gritty and, and and dark uh and that's so this isn't really it they're going to see that right away in that in that look inside so you'll yeah. never get that sale let's just talk about the look inside a bit because i think it's just something people don't consider that often although we do talk about it in our book lab episodes on this on this show but there's a good point there that your look inside does have to reinforce the genre again doesn't it so if you've got a you've got a thriller but you're doing something creative and clever with the first chapter some sort of historical scene set that's not going to sure. serve you well is it it's not going to serve you well. Again, it's just another potential uh, potentiality, I should say, for people to not purchase your book. Um, I, as a browser, as a as a reader, I I use Amazon because I you know I'm a Kindle uh, unlimited subscriber, and and so I read through Amazon and I browse Amazon. For some strange reason, I never look inside any of the books. Uh, that's not part of my buying process. However. I think I'm probably the outlier. I think most people who are buying Kindle books specifically will look at the look inside, not all of them, but some of them. Um, and in, in order to make sure all, all we're really talking about here, James, is, is the optimization, right? We just need to optimize everything. The book cover isn't an art gallery piece, but we need to optimize it. We need to make sure we're, we're catching the right eyeballs in the right time in the right place. Um, the look inside is the same way. And one of the, the easiest ways we can optimize it uh, and this is going to probably sound obvious for some people, but if you're new and haven't considered this, look at what will show up first in that look inside, because Amazon won't necessarily automatically place that look inside the 10% they're going to see or whatever it is now um, at the beginning of your book with the actual prose begins. They may start it with the table of contents if you've got one or the 
the copyright page. Uh, and for this reason, a lot of authors, and I recommend doing this, will put all of that stuff at the end of the book rather than at the beginning. So the first thing you do when you click the look inside is you get words that you can read. You get the story. You know, there's no dedication, no acknowledgement because the reader's not going to read your book because your dedication is really well written. That's just not the thing. You know, that's never the case. So you can still have all that, but put it at the end of the end of your book so that you've optimized the look inside for people who are, are, are interested in this type of story. Yeah. That's a really, um, again, that's a really good tip. Yeah. You, you don't want to be selling your book. You don't want to be marketing your book to people who, who don't want to read it in the first place. That's another thing. It's we don't want to optimize everything for the whole world. We want to optimize for that specific reader who likes, again, going with the same example I had before, edgy, tongue in cheek. I don't even know what I said before, but all, you know, all these yeah. different yeah. This labels for, for types of books that people want. Optimize everything in that sales funnel um, for that particular reader. And you're going to find that those readers will self-select. Yeah. Okay. So let's say someone sat down with, uh, with you and uh, you've instructed them on the book package and they've sorted themselves out and that you're saying to them now oh, that, that's a great cover i love the title bullet point or whatever you know the sure, title sure. is going to going to spell out the genre like the blurb where do they start next what, what their biggest scary thing in front of them is probably the next step isn't it of, of paid ads or marketing or something it could be yeah and that's really the problem is there are so many different things we could do the challenge you see most authors trying to overcome is not which one should I focus on, but how do I possibly do all of these things? Man, I know newsletter swaps work. So I'm going to go sign up with, um, you know, story origin or book funnel and I'm going to get in group promo. Hey, that's really great, but that's a lot of work. Don't, don't do anything else. Like focus on that for a few months and really understand that system and that, that universe. Um, even just picking one of those two options I just said, you know, it would be a good thing. To, that's a lot of work to just focus on building that newsletter mailing list um, right off the bat, uh, which I, I think is an important task. I think you should do that. Don't at the same time say, I'm going to learn Facebook ads. I've enrolled in this, this bloke named Mark Dawson. He has this weird course that no one's ever heard of before. No, I'm going to go enroll in that and learn Facebook ads. And that, that's a huge endeavor, you know? So, so if you're going to do that, just focus on that. Um, I think what people think is if I just, if I can somehow, become a God among men and learn all of these things at the same time and spend so much effort doing all of the things at once, this will happen faster. And, and I don't think that's the case. So that's really the second lesson here. If I'm sitting down with someone, I'm going to say, Hey, I need you to understand we're talking about long-term success here. I don't think that is, if there is a silver bullet, I, I would probably know about it because, you know, I've, I've heard of, I've tried everything. I've tried all the silver bullets before. None of them worked. Right. So um, we have to prepare ourselves for a long slog of learning some of these tasks. But the good news is at this, this time and this juncture with, with indie publishing, the way it is, the information is, is readily available, uh, whether it's a paid course like Dawson's or something for free, you know, and following somebody on Twitter, there's all sorts of ways we can, can get at the particular information we, we need to get. So the, the, the decision is, what do I do? What's the next best thing? And if you don't have a mailing list, I would always say that's the next thing to, to look at. Um, start that yesterday, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, go, go to storyorigin.com, book funnel, whatever it is. Um, I run a company called Author Email, which is an email newsletter, email service provider. I'm not here to self-promote that, but again, get some sort of mailing list. Um, and, and set that up and start working on finding those readers who are interested in that. And probably the best way to do that and the cheapest way to do that in 2022 is by doing newsletter swaps with other people in the genre. Just yeah. start building some some trajectory toward success. And once you've got that foundation set up, and this is something you mentioned in the course, where obviously Mark covers this in the course, is, is, is you can then pile on the next thing. So if you do have a good setup you've got your landing pages and stuff and don't worry if you don't understand what we're, you know this language uh, you can learn all this stuff you've got your mailing list ready to grow you've got your links here and there then you can think do you know what i've got some capacity now let's start looking at facebook ads and absolutely so, you know when people take our course they say how long will it take to do the course now I, I think well there's amazon ads facebook ads book ads there's now going to be book talk for authors how long does it take to do the course give it six months to do one bit you know you've got to you can't yeah. just you yeah. know you you, you you exactly right. You master something. And at some point you will know you've got the capacity You're getting, in, you know, a, a bit of spare time. That's becoming a little bit easier. That dashboard that looked bewildering to you at the beginning is now making sense to you. You can start picking up the next thing, but there is a lot, right? There is a lot. A lot. It's, it's, so uh, mailing yeah. this first, a good, good tip. The, the, the challenge is there's so much and it's all potentially really good, helpful things uh, to do. 
in the marketing world that we want to do it all. And it's all fun in some sense. Hey, I'm learning something new. This is great. We all love to learn. But the, the, the challenge is, is again, to, to realize that like it, just by doing a little bit of everything, that's almost worse than focusing on one thing. And what I mean is if, if I'm going to say, I'm going to build my newsletter, but I'm also going to run Facebook ads, I'm also going to run Amazon ads. I'm going to learn all these different tools um, that I can use that other people do use very successfully. Um, but you're not giving any of them your, your full attention or time or effort, or in some cases money, um, you're going to just be throwing good money after bad because you're, you're not able to, to figure out what went wrong with the particular campaign. Cause you're already over here learning Amazon ads instead, or you have to worry about this group promo. So yeah, it's just basically simplifying everything you're doing so that you can spend a good month or two learning the ins and outs of your email service, uh, whatever you use, MailChimp, MailerLite, whatever, um, figure out those relationships with other people in your genre, um, start building those, start sending out and start building that mailing list. And pretty soon you'll say, ah, okay, I got this. I can keep this running. I'm not going to stop doing this because it's important. It's foundational, but I can keep this running while I go learn from Dawson on through his course or while I go learn Amazon ads. And then you can focus on that thing. The point is you don't ever stop doing the previous thing you learned. And that's where we get caught up. We think, well, I tried Instagram ads for a month and it didn't work. So, so that doesn't work. I'm going to go try Pinterest ads. No, 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 no. It's probably going to take you six months to, to really foundationally understand whether or not it could work. Maybe yeah. another six months to actually make it work, you know, and it's just, it's, it's hard because it, all these things take time. Yeah. Uh, and as far as money is concerned, I think it was Seth Godin who said, we know that half of all advertising works. We just don't know which half. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's really just the, the, it's the bane of my existence, but it's so true, you know? Yeah, that's um that old one. You get people say, "What well, Facebooks don't work? Facebook ads don't work, or Amazon ads don't work." And you're talking to an author, and then you talk a little delve a little bit deeper, and it turns out their their sole experiment lasted about a week and a half. And right. you think, "Wow, in a week <laughs> and a half, I barely knew how to log into Facebook ads platform." It's taken right. me months and months of failure and failure to start generating success with that, that platform. And um, yeah, you do have to stick at things. I guess that's the other thing. It's a mindset thing. It's where you started, really, when you said you've got to look at your books as products, kind of detach yourself from them a bit. But you've also got to have a mindset to make to to master a particular area of marketing. You do, and and you have to be willing to give it the time. And I say time, time is money, right? Well, literally, in advertising, money is money as well. <laughs> and so we have to be willing to not only give it the time to learn something, but for it to play out, for it to build the traction. They're really, I mean, unless you're coming at it with a million dollars, you are not going to be able to have nearly enough money invested in a quick amount of time to be able to understand the variables, the, the trigger, the, the thing, the switches we can, we can switch, right? Yeah. Uh, we can flip. And, and so what that looks like is, you know, somebody will say, Hey, I've got $500. I got a Christmas present from my, my parents and they're They want me to market my books and uh, get the advertising running. So I have $500 to spend, um, I think I can do this. I'm going to learn. I'm going to take it, take a month and, and learn ads. And it's like, great. What are you going to do the next month? Cause it'll take you a month in $500 to get your ads building, to figure out which ones didn't work to build your, you know um, your uh, CBO ad or whatever the case is. And, and then next month you're going to be looking for more money because you're going to have an idea that these ads might work a little bit better. So I want to spend more and, and, and hone these. And then the third month and then fourth month. So do you have $500 every month for the next six months to really put this to the test? Um, and then there's the other problem of, well, I don't have 500. I'm going to do $5 a day. And it's, Hey, that's great for learning how to run ads. It is not going to work for a marketing campaign in this day and age. Uh, and the, of course, and we know the reasons for that, if anyone is, is curious as to why that doesn't work um, it's not just about competition, although that's part of it. Um, meaning other other av other advertisers, whether they're authors or sellers or whoever. But it's it's just the sheer fact that there's not enough emotion. Um, sorry, motion, not emotion. But that could be the problem. There's not enough motion. There's not enough happening. If you're spending five dollars a day, and let's say each of your clicks is seventy five cents, um, I don't math, but that's probably somewhere in the realm of six to seven clicks a day, and maybe one of those converts if you're got a really, really great book package on Amazon. Um, you've had one sale. That's not nearly enough to tell Amazon who's buying your book. They only have one sale. They only say, well, this one person bought their book. So will they, okay. They also bought a cutting board and they bought this romance novel. Uh, there's just not enough information that Amazon can use to build that also bots at the bottom. Right? So $5 a day 
even if it's being run for a month, it doesn't give them enough information to give you enough information. Right. And so the, the challenge is, well, you also don't want to just go through 500 a day if you don't know what you're doing. So that's where the time factor comes back in. So do the $5 a day ads, whether it's Facebook, Amazon, Instagram, whatever you're trying to learn only once, I mean, only one at a time, and then run that for a month. So you learn the platform, you learn the ropes, you learn a little bit about how ads are, are built and served, and then start increasing your budget, you know, 10, 15, $20 a day. You can start getting some good data back from Amazon or the, I say Amazon to mean any, any marketplace that you're, you're focusing on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I do agree with that. And I, with Fuse Books, which it was my first sort of serious mm -hmm. Facebook advertising, I obviously advertise my own book now, but um, started with them. I actually wrote off a thousand pounds, which is about $1,400 at the beginning, because I knew that I needed to learn the platform and it took the pressure off me. And I said to Mark, this is investment money. It's not going to be profitable. And it was about right, is about right for me to then start making profits um, in month two to month three. I've now got that, but I still do that with new series. We take on a new series from people. I still write off 500 pounds, which is like $700. Mm -hmm. And I say at the beginning, that $700 is me working out what's going to work with this particular series. Now, this is the sort of thing that does scare people. There are people sitting at home listening to this thinking, I do not have $700 to throw at something. But <laughs> no. I, I don't know what you'd say to them, but I, I would also say there are very few businesses that don't require any investment at all. And this is an investment. Doesn't look or feel like it sometimes at the time feels like you're just spending money and not seeing a return, but it is an investment. It is. And I, that's a great way to look at it because it truly is an investment. It's not gambling. You know, you're not putting your money in a slot machine. You actually are doing something that potentially could be a boon for your career. However, I do also want to make sure that people understand advertising is a force multiplier. And this goes, this, this goes way back to the first thing we talked about with the book package. If something isn't working, you're multiplying that yeah. by, by putting a dollar, a pound behind it, whatever it is, you are multiplying whatever you've built initially. So this is why people say the best marketing is writing the next book, haha, tongue in cheek, but guess what? It's true mm -hmm. because you're building success forward. You're, you're putting more products out there and you're letting, if the book packaging is taken care of all the things we talked about, description, blurb, look inside, cover, whatever. If all that is great and in place and you keep doing it by adding more and more books into your backlist uh, or, or into a series, even better. Um, what's happening is, is over time, you will have people self-select. You will have readers come and say, this, all this lines up with what I want. This is perfect. This is exactly like Dan Brown, Clive Cussler, whoever it is, like in my genre. I'm going to read this guy. I'm going to read this Nick Thacker guy. And then when I want to advertise, it's so much easier. That money can be spent. That investment can be invested better because I already have a pool of people who have self-selected to be my marketing guinea pigs, essentially, right? I've already got it. This is, this is the plays out in Facebook with the lookalike audience. I now have people who have read my book. They're on my mailing list. I can use that to build a lookalike audience and start from there, you know, and uh, the top of Dawson's funnel, right? This is the, the, the very wide net that we're casting. If you don't have anything to go off of, the, you don't have a force to multiply, right? So good or bad, advertising is a force multiplier. You can be multiplying a bad force, which is a book that hasn't been packaged well, um, or you've missed some something, or you can multiply your success and make it even more successful. This is why people who post on the 20 books group and, hey, I, you know, I made $2 million last year, but I spent 1.5 million. That's terrifying for most of us. That's a lot of money especially if you're a sole author, you know, this isn't a publishing company, right? It's absolutely terrifying, but that's why they're able to do it. You know, that's that, that 25% ROI that they're showing. Um, or I think that's right. Whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't look like much when, when we're spending a dollar and we made a dollar 25, um, that doesn't seem like our advertising is working, but those are the exact same numbers. They're yeah. just the force multipliers is, is just bigger, you know? And so I don't know, I'm getting ahead of myself, but yeah, we don't have, yeah, we, we don't have to spend a million and a half um, at this point, but, and I should also say about the sort of the 500, the $700 that I put in expecting to lose. Um, I'm starting to see results quite quickly through that. Um, this is not, this is not $700 that, that goes nowhere. This is right. every, every penny spent, every cent spent I'm trying to cross my currencies here, um, <laughs> is, uh, is valuable intel. And I only progress if there are signs that things are going to work or, or I'm making a positive decision to stop one line of attack and start something else. But, um, but yeah, this is scary. So I wanted to address that for people listening who, 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 
who shudder at this prospect. And $5 a day, as you say, you're not going to get the traction. $10 a day, probably you are going to get some traction, well, I think. You get some traction, sure. Yeah. That's what it seems. It does seem like the, you know, the cost per click has been going up, things with, especially on Facebook, the iOS 14 updates have changed things. So all these things are true. I would generally expect to spend more next year than, than, than less, right? But other than that, I mean, you can still, so, so instead of, you know, $10, next year it might be 15 to get that traction. But the point is it, it, there is a low number that, that works yeah. to build that traction. Um, I, I hesitate to put an actual round number on it because every platform is different, you know, where you can run an auto campaign for $5 a day. And, you know, some of those are very successful on Amazon. Um, mine never are, but right. uh, sometimes that that'll work. And so I think uh, it's important to just realize that, that, that really low number is good for testing and learning, figuring out a new platform. You don't want to be spending bad money for no reason. So just spend as, as little as possible up into the point where you feel like you've learned what you're doing and you know how to build an ad. And you've got a pretty good idea that your book is all, everything's packaged well. Now you're ready to go and you kind of turn things on. And maybe that's that's $10 a day now or 15 or 20 or whatever it is. Um, yeah. So I think that's when you start to, to build that traction and actually get the ROI. But don't look at the ROI before that because right. just be disappointed. Yeah. And uh, working out whether your Amazon ads are actually working or not is in itself an art form. Um, we Mark and I had a long conversation about that today. I think we're going to do an episode on it soon because you do nice. have to understand the role of benchmarking. It's not a dashboard that's going to give you a lot of uh, information about whether your right. ads are working or not. Um, okay. So do you think generally people come to you and need more mindset help or do they need more sort of technical help in terms, not not technical help, well, I mean help with the yeah. like you've got to it's change your cover, you've got to have this account set up, or are you working more with them about their attitude and, and, and methodology? That's a great question. And it's it's so funny. Um the answer to that question is people think they want the practical. They think they need that when they really need the mindset shift. They they really need to understand this holistic marketing approach before they start doing anything practical. Um, just to keep it very simple, the, 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 the approach is of marketing. It, it, we as authors tend to think, okay, I'm going to put this hat on now. I'm going to change. I'm a, now I'm a writer. And then now I'm going to put my marketing hat on. And I'm like, Hey, there's no, there's no hat. Like you, you're just a person who's created something that there are other people in the world who would love to see. Okay. This isn't creating a product that nobody wants and then trying to, to jam it down our throat using really strategic Facebook ads, because that's people do that. And there's companies that certainly thrive on that, but that's not what you are as an author. No author that I know is, is that way. We have this book that we wrote. And even though we're unique snowflakes, no one's like us. There's a lot of people who would really like to read that book. There's a lot of people just like us in that, in their reading sensibilities, right? We need to find those people because they want to hear from us. That's the first mindset shift that I, I want people to make because a lot of us approach this as this scary, I don't want to do marketing. It's weird. I don't get it. Um, I don't like selling myself, yeah. right? I don't like to put myself out there. And and it's not really about the, um, the, the getting turned down. It, I don't think people are necessarily afraid of that as much. There's possibly a little bit of it. They don't want to get told no. Um, but I, I think we're, we're really trying to, to fight the mindset of, I don't think there's anybody out there that wants this. So I feel like I'm selling, I'm, I'm, I'm sleazy, I'm scammy, right? I'm scamming somebody. That's not it at all because we know people want to read books. A lot of people sell a lot, of, a lot of books, right? And so our book is like some of those books and there is a market for that, however small. There are people who want that. So get out of your head and, and, um, and, and realize that there are people who want, who are clamoring for that. They just don't know how to find you. You just need to make marketing is just making it as easy as possible so for those belief, readers. You're talking about your book. There's got to be some belief in yourself, which is a difficult thing, I think, for some people as well. Most most of us think, or we'll go through phases of thinking, my book is terrible. No one mm -hmm. wants to read it, <laughs> particularly when you're drafting. Um, yeah. And then occasionally thinking, oh, maybe it's not too bad. But it's it we as humans perhaps err on that first side. Yeah, I always say we're, you're your own worst critic until you get married, um, you know, and so <laughs> you, uh, you you always read, you know, the 25 percent mark. You're like, this is this is trash. No one's going to read this 50 percent. You're like, well, I'm 50. I got to yeah. finish now. You know, it yeah. still sucks, but you know, I got to get through it. 75 percent. You start to go, well, OK, I could see this being a book and then you finish it and you read it back. And you're like, oh, whew, wow, that was better than I thought it was. Yeah. Maybe somebody will buy this thing. At least that's my experience every single book. And lo and behold, a lot of people buy my books. And they seem to enjoy them. So yeah. 
And we you know, know that's Dan true, Brown yeah. has his critics. You mentioned that earlier. A lot of people very sneery about Dan Brown's books and so on. They're written for 13 year olds. And my goodness, he has many, 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 many millions of dollars <laughs> in the bank to show that there are people who want to read his books. It, literally this morning, I, I watched a video. I think it was John Oliver uh, is a nine minute rant on Da Vinci Code. Right. You know, and it there was funny. Go. It was yeah. he's, he's brilliant. I, he's, it was funny. And I laughed and all that. But uh, also Da Vinci Code is the reason I got into writing. That was yeah. the book that my dad gave me that said, hey, this is good. Read it. And I would love to write a book as terrible as Da Vinci Code. Exactly. If I get the sales yeah, yeah. from it. I would yeah. love to be that that terrible of an author. Yeah. Well, I always listen to Jenny Nash talking about Dan Brown, who she's one of his biggest fans and said, you know, you want to understand writing, you want to start page turning writing, you start studying Dan Brown. Yeah. And um, there's a there's Patterson, a real- Grisham. Tri- yep. Yeah. These yeah. are the guys. Yeah. Um, okay. Let, let's talk a bit, uh, just before we go, I talk a bit about author.email. It is your service. I know you set this up a few years ago. So this is a bit like MailChimp or um, ConvertKit or it whatever. Is- this is your version of it. So what's what's the USP of author.email? It's way cheaper. That's the unique selling proposition for us. It's cheaper. The, the, the point is, it's not any less good either. That, that's the best part. And in some ways, I think it's way better. I don't want to get into the details of that because it's technical and all that. But um, it's all cloud-based, which means you know, the issue that MailerLite had a few years ago, MailerLite's a great company. I, I love those guys. They're doing good stuff. But these services are, are maintaining their own servers. They have a literal room somewhere full of computers. And if one of them you know, gets hit by a Russian bot or something, they all go down. And that IP address... Um, is is ruined essentially by by having all of our service services on on the cloud you know cloud infrastructure cloud architecture we can not only bounce around different IP addresses and not actually be in one location um, we get to build that reputation over time because we never have that happen to us if something happens to one email address goes you know bonkers then we just move that IP address somewhere else and we're good, we're still good to go. It also is true that because we don't have to maintain um, a group of long haired engineers that keep the servers running and pay them big bucks like people do, um, we can keep it a lot cheaper. So our our lowest package is ten ninety nine a month. Um, and that's for up to I think it's just under ten thousand so nine hundred nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine subscribers. Wow. Right. Which is unheard of. Right. And, and the, the, the reason is it's just as simple as I said, it's we don't have the computing overhead that we need or that companies otherwise need. Um, we found a way to work around that by doing cloud architecture and stuff. So it's no less safe. It's actually a little bit better. Deliverability reputation tends to be right in line with the best of the best of any of these other companies. Um, and another reason for that is we are exclusive to authors. Authors typically are not spammers. We're not sending out internet marketing uh, crap. You know, we're not going on, um, uh, JV websites to get, you know, a joint venture products and send those. We're not doing any of that, right? We're just selling our books. We're just talking to our readers. And so we're able to keep things very clean, which translates to much better reputation. The deliverability is high and all that. Um, unlike MailChimp, we don't have a free trial because we do have costs. Um, and so we're not able to, to fund that from our high paying users. Right. But I found I was using MailChimp for many years. Again, a great company. I know Ben, they're, they're good people. Um, but they're not building an email service. They're building a CRM tool now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you go in MailChimp and you log in and you have all these weird things that I just would never need as an author. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, we just get rid of all that crap and, and just send emails, do autoresponders, signups, all that. That's all we need. Um, and so that's what author email is. It's it's simplified in a lot of ways, but it's also very robust as far as the, the tools that you need to build autoresponders, things like that are every bit as robust as ConvertKit or ActiveCampaign, whatever it is. And where can people find it? Uh, AuthorEmail.com is the website. You can go sign up for that 30-day trial, give it a shot, test it out. Um, yeah, all the information is there. We've got a knowledge base that's constantly growing. Uh, and then 2022 is going to have some some pretty cool updates uh, that I can't talk about yet. It's top secret government clearance level stuff. You know? can't even whisper it. Okay, well that's great. <laughs> and, uh, well done because I know you've persevered at that, and it's been um, like any you know a technical product that takes. Oh we, God, we, we know can it. talk about. If anyone's <laughs> wanting to start an email service provider, just run the other direction. Yeah. Just don't even <laughs> consider that. But yeah, we could do a whole a whole hour on that for sure. But it's um, it's been a. a, a a journey worth taking um nick look we've come to the end of our time thank you so much indeed it's been um, it's been great talking to you I, I did want to focus on exactly what we've talked about which is that getting started those obstacles are ahead of people and, and realizing most of all it's probably a mindset thing that you need to get right first um and get yourself in the right frame of mind uh, which hopefully we've addressed a little bit 
I think so too. And if I, if I'm allowed one shameless plug here, uh, don't do the author emo one. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll change it to this one. Uh, this was more in line with the marketing thing, but what I've done, I, I spoke at 20 books. I'll be speaking again at uh, this year and, and at in, in, um, superstars conference next month about this marketing topic. And the way, the best way I've found to do it is sort of to break it into these three big buckets that I think we should be focusing on. Uh, and those are, we talked about most of them, advertising newsletters and social media. Um, and if, if anyone's interested in just kind of a, in a crash course in any of those, I have three email chains. It's a 20 week email course. They're all free. Um, but just go sign up and you'll get an email every week from me explaining one of those things, social media, advertising and newsletters. So we'll set up a, we'll set up a page to make it easy for people to find that if they go to selfpublishingformula.com forward slash buckets, B-U-C-K-E-T-S. Um, I like just, that. Yeah, it's going to be a unique, like better. <laughs> a unique URL. Um, there you go. Uh, brilliant. Nick, thank you so much indeed. Uh, lovely to catch up with you. We will hopefully see you again at a conference sometime this year, maybe even here in the UK. And, we will, um, yeah. And yeah. we'll catch a golf game when we're, while we're at it. We'd love to do that, of course. Yeah, right. yeah it's been wet and soggy <laughs> golf. Though. I'm looking forward to some more of that Vegas golf we had last time. <laughs> yes, All yes. All right. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Nick, so much. Take care, James. Thanks. This is the self-publishing show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. There you go. There is Nick Thacker, uh, who who works one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know if we gave away where he lives, but I'm sure you can Google and find Nick on the internet somewhere if you want to work with him one-on-one. -on -one. And he referred, of course, to our courses here at Self Publishing Formula. I know he's been a big fan from early days. Um, and uh, we'll mention again that Ads for Authors is open for the first time since last June. It's been a long time and it won't open again until the autumn, no, no, we're pretty certain. So now's the chance to jump on, particularly if you want access to the TikTok for Authors module at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash ads for authors. I do think I have talked quite a lot, Mark, today. You, you have talked quite a lot. Yes, you, I'm sure your voice is going. I'll let you talk some more. Quite enjoying no, it. I'm, I'm staying silent. See what happens. Dead air is a crime. As <laughs> <laughs> crunching Alan said. Partridge. <laughs> Am I crunching? Is, is it Alan Partridge oh. or is it Dave Clifton who says that? That's, that's Dave, Alan, is Dave Clifton it? says that, yeah. Ah, Terry, okay. he, he says, uh, Terry's chocolate oranges are available from Wardenson's. I really do have to say that. <laughs> is what I, I think he says in that same episode. Okay, look, that's it. That's obscure British humour. Um, oh, I tell you what we can release, uh -huh. release Mark. Aha, uh -huh. we can announce the fi final announce the actual dates of the self publishing show live. Almost. Almost. We haven't signed it yet. We but haven't signed it. I suppose it. we can, yeah. I mean, it's well, we could, well, as long as we caveat that as we haven't signed it yet, although we think we probably will be possibly by the time this goes out, hopefully. It is the 28th and 29th of June. Is that right? It is the 28th and 29th of June. Oh, my camera's turned off, so I'm now on my Zoom picture. That's fine. Uh, my hair looks even worse. Yeah, 28th, 29th of June. So it's a Tuesday and Wednesday in June. Uh, it's going to be in London at the South Bank Centre. We haven't actually signed the contract, and we're just waiting for one or two sponsors just to let us know that they are aligned with those dates. But it's not, I would say, 90 to 95% is where we're sitting at now. We need to get going with ticket sales. So uh, stay in touch keep on our mailing list make sure mm. you're opted in um, and also make sure you check our facebook groups and um, we'll set up a separate one for the conference once we uh, we announce ticket sales um actually we could probably set that up fairly soon then that'd be a good place to announce ticket sales mm. and coordinate them uh, i'll leave that one with you mark um but we will we think it's probably going to be 99 pounds for the two days so it'll be two days and we will do there'll be a limit of something like 900 uh, seats but we can't sell any more than that. But we will have a separate evening due for those people who can't make them. There are weekdays. If you can't make the conference, uh, you may get an opportunity and we'll see what we can do in terms of, of numbers at the evening due. See if we can raise that a little bit as well. Um, yes, I think that is it. I think so. Yes. I'm so, going to have to go and talk yeah. to the dog because I've yeah. got the talks today. Yes, yeah, so you go do that. And then, um, yeah, I was going to, I don't know, probably do another couple of hours of work. Why not? I mean, into the zone yeah. now. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I think I, I'm not going to write today. Um, I'm going to get on with the TikTok course edit. 
um, which uh, yep. I'm enjoying doing because I'm enjoying doing my TikTok stuff as well. Good. Okay. Thank you very much indeed for listening. Thank you to our guest, Nick Thacker. Thank you to the team in the background, John and Catherine and John uh, and Stuart and Alexandra and everybody who helps put this uh, show together. Uh, we appreciate it very much. And we will see you next week. Don't forget that webinar on Wednesday, selfpublishingformula.com forward slash learn Amazon if you want to sign up for that. Um, they do get oversubscribed occasionally, so get there early as well. And don't forget, Ads for Authors is open for a week or so more. That's selfpublishingformula.com forward slash ads for authors. That is it. All that remains for me to say is it's a goodbye from him. And a goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Get show notes, the podcast archive, and free resources to boost your writing career at selfpublishingshow.com. Join our thriving Facebook group at selfpublishingshow.com forward slash Facebook. Support the show at patreon.com forward slash self-publishing show. And join us next week for more help and inspiration so that you can make your mark as a successful indie author. Publishing is changing. So get your words into the world and join the revolution with the self-publishing show.